It's okay, you're the first person I ever heard talking about legacy burdens. I think that was the early 2000s. Where did you hear about it? It was about, it was probably about the year 2000, and a friend of mine had gone to a conference, an IFS conference that I didn't attend, and said that someone was talking about legacy burdens. And I could feel that I knew, I knew that I had a legacy burden. And so the concept made so much sense to me. Now that woman left IFS, I, I hate to say it, but I don't remember her name. I don't think I ever knew it. And uh, no one else was talking about this. And I didn't know where to turn, but I knew that I had to figure it out. So I began to study it. I began to study everything I could get my hands on. I went and I did a shamanic training. I did an energy healing training. And I began to read everything I could get my hands on. So a gentleman named Rupert Sheldrake, who's a physicist, is very difficult to read, but I did everything I could to try to understand what he was saying about these morphic fields. There's actually morphic, morphic energetic fields that run through families, and they run through ancestor lines. So, so my whole ancestor line would have a morphic field that if my mother hadn't taken care of some pattern that came through, then I would get it, and it would be coming through the morphic fields. So if there's a trauma that happens in one generation, that trauma gets passed on, unless the people in that generation are able to do the work that they need to do. Like in other cultures, people do those kind of things. They do ceremonies, they let go of things, but in my particular culture, which is English, Irish, and French, there wasn't, there hasn't been those kind of rituals for thousands of years. I mean, once upon a time, there were those rituals, and so people could take care of this. But once we let go of all of that, those deep rituals and the, and the deep things that a lot of the Asian cultures still have, the Tibetans have it, the Buddhists have it, the Hindus often have it, but Judeo-Christian culture has not really oriented towards those kind of rituals. I think there's a lot of Jews who have studied the Kabbalah, and there's some Christian mystics who have done that kind of work, but uh, in the majority, a lot of us haven't. And so we are carrying our ancestors' pain and our ancestors' burdens, and they still live within us. And if we don't take care of them, we pass them on to our children. Wow, that's pretty cool. Now, it's it, very cool. Now it's really become part of the training that all IFS are, therapists are taught this. And um, How did that happen? How did it get brought into the IFS training? Well, there were, um, there were several of us who just began to study it. So Mitchie Rose was one of the people, and Barb Cargill, and myself. The three of us had the major interest in this legacy burden um, information. And we began to study it. Mitchie went off and did some energy training, and so she studied it that way. Barb has a yogic training, and she was interested in it from that pursuit. And I studied the shamanic training. And between the three of us, we began to orient ourselves towards this way of working. Now, I still don't know exactly what they do that is different from what I do, but, but we started to distribute this information, and then other people got interested in it, and they started to teach it their own way, and so now it's a regular part of the training. But back in the day, it was like, we need to gather this information, and I gathered for years, spent a lot of time trying to figure this thing out. Well, and those of us who have learned it from you are very grateful. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, now that you know about legacy burdens, mm -hmm. what do you do with them? Well, see, here's the thing about legacy burdens. You can't, this is not something that you can talk through. This is, that's why regular psychotherapy or just talk therapy cannot get to this because it's an energetic process. If you think about those morphic fields, it's an energetic field. The physicists know about it now. And so actually, this body of information has been really studied. Um, and they don't think of it in terms of legacy burdens, but they think of it in terms of these morphic fields. 
So these energetic fields, what happens is they, they really, we carry them in our DNA. We carry them in our cells and we carry them in our skin. And so you need to go through the body to get to these legacy burdens and you need to work with it energetically. So what I'll do with a client is I'll, I'll begin to, you know, in IFS, we take people back into their history and we, there might be a part and we'll say, where is it that this part began? See if you could take it back as far as it goes. So people mostly go back to their childhood and there's some childhood memory that helps them to carry a particular burden or a particular belief. But some people will say to you, well, I don't know, I came in with this. Like I always, it's always been there. And so if it's always been there, then there's one out of one or two things that could be, right? Either it's a past life, and if it's a past life, then we work with it in a particular way, or, or it's a legacy burden. And if it's a legacy burden, what we say is, okay, so this is, if this is a legacy burden, just notice if this is, belongs to someone else besides you. Like, does this energy belong to someone else? And people will know, parts will know, they go, oh God, yeah, this is, this is my mother's, or maybe it's, it's even my grandmother's. Like, I know I got this from my mother's lineage. And so what I would say to them at that point was, okay, so just checking in with this energy that's your mother's and just see how it would feel to let that energy go. And just check with your parts and see if they'd be willing to do that. And the part will say, okay, okay, yeah, I, I would like to, right? And then this is um, something I got from Mitchy Rose. Then I would ask the question, so how much, how, what percentage of this is yours? And what percentage of this belongs to your mother? So maybe it's like 80-30 or 80-20, 80-20, right? So say 80% my mother. Okay, so if we invite in your mother's energy, that 80%, let's invite your mother's energy to be here. And then just follow it back, like how far, so how much of this is your mother's and how much of it is your grandmother's? Oh, it's also my grandmother's. So then, okay, we're gonna invite in the grandmother. And then just see how far back does this, does this legacy burden go? And they'll say, oh, it goes back at least three generations, right? So, okay, so now we have three generations, and let's say it's the grandmothers. And so we're gonna set up this pattern. So in front of you, I'm gonna ask your mother to be here, and back of your mother, and we're gonna invite in your grandmother, and back of your grandmother, we'll put your great-grandmother, and then in back of your great-grandmother, I want you to imagine a healing space, right? And then we're gonna come back to the person we're going to say, okay, so let's check in. And are you ready to give this back? So they might say no, right? They might, they might have some hesitation. It's like, well, this is something because parts will often carry something for their family and feel like that's their duty. And so you may have to do some work with that part. And you want to reassure the parts all the time that everybody in that lineage is going to get a healing. So you're not going to be burdening anybody with that. Like that's a really important thing to say up front. So the person will say, okay, I feel ready now that they have this information. So then you ask them to find that burden that they carry in their body. And, and this is like one of those magical things. This is one of those shamanic kinds of things. It's an energetic thing. And so they might draw that energy, asking them to draw it from their cells, from their DNA, from their body, to draw it out and hold on to it and pass it back to their mother. Mom, this does not belong to me. This belongs to you. So mom takes that burden and she takes your burden and her own, draws it up from her body, from her cells, from her DNA, from her skin takes her ball of energy plus yours, passes it back to the grandmother. Mom, this is not my energy. It is not Joanna's energy. This energy belongs to you. 
Grandma takes that energy. She takes Joanna's energy. She takes her daughter's energy. She takes her own energy, does the very same thing, passes it back to her mother. And the great-grandmother takes all of it, adds her own, and passes it back to the healing place. Now, this could go back generations and generations. You could take this as far back as you want. But I often take it back three generations because we usually don't have much knowledge beyond that. So then that last generation will send it into the healing space. And the healing space will send it off to transform it, right? And after it transforms that energy, it's ability to be able to send a healing back down through the ancestors. So just like when we do an unburdening process, we ask what qualities or what energies would be helpful to this ancestry line. And so that energy gets passed down all the way through the ancestors and back to the person that we're working with. And then really spending time just being with that person and helping them to integrate that new energy. Right? So then there's also that, so then when we're done with that process, we go back and we say, well, how about that 20%? Often it's done, right? Often it's done. But if there is a 20%, we want to go back to that and unburden that in a particular way, in the traditional way that we would any unburdening process.